Hi people and welcome to another West Coast Visions podcast. In this episode we're going to talk about the short documentary slash windsurfing film we did with Mark Paré called Mark Paré the Involuntary Danish. If you haven't seen it, just check it out. It's on our YouTube channel. Check it out anytime and hope you enjoy it. And the idea of this video and why we did it came from... I always have... A, we did another video with Alessio Stilrich uh, in Cape Town. I think it was 2019, early 2020, just before the pandemic hit. Or if it was uh, 2019, I don't really remember. And ever since then... I kind of fell in love in like a longer format, uh, windsurfing movie, action film kind of style. And to also portray the, the writers a little bit more because I think uh, I've done it a lot in the past and I think uh, windsurfing films and videos lately is a lot with pure action. So it's nice to get a face and get a feeling a bit more of the writer uh, than you usually do nowadays. And also I grew up watching these windsurfing films, so I, I kind of tend to, to, to go into longer formats and want to challenge myself into make a piece that is longer than three minutes or, or something like that. Uh, and to uh, get a story together, together with some action. Uh, and me and Mark know each other from way back uh, when I was competing on the world tour. And I had just seen his progression and he is such a ripper. So I... For many years I've wanted to do a piece with Mark and I think now he's on the level where you can really get full proper like work class action from him where, wherever he is. So, so, so I came with the idea that I want to make a video about him being more in Denmark during the pandemic and because he, he fell in love with uh, a, a girl when he was there. Uh, for the European Championships a couple of years ago when he became a, the European champion. And I think what was really cool, like a Spanish guy who is a professional windsurfer who wants to spend the winter in, in Denmark, obviously because of the pandemic and uh, Spain going into lockdown and he kind of wanted to avoid that and still be able to windsurf and practice. So he spent a lot of time there and I thought it was a cool story and I wanted to mix that together with some radical action. So we, we teamed up and, and we spoke about it and we kind of decided to, to uh, during the fall of uh, 2021, pull the trigger during a, uh, during a forecast, which was good. So we spoke with his sponsors, uh, Fanatic and Duotone, if they wanted to support the project and they did. So massive thanks for them because without them, it wouldn't really be possible to do it. Um, and a uh, big shout out to Matt um, at uh, Fanatic and Duotone Marketing uh, Department. He, he was really keen and he, he really supported this uh, project and he was a really, yeah, a big shout out to him. He, he did a great job and he really pushed us to, to do this. And, you know, I came up with the story idea. So I wrote the treatment. So when we pulled the trigger, uh, when the forecast was good, uh, I knew what I was going to do, what we were going to shoot uh, and how we would schedule the days because otherwise you maybe end up just getting action and then you kind of lose the story or you just go with the story and the lifestyle shots and then you miss the action. So it was a very demanding week because we were just full on every day, early mornings to late nights. And... It came across, I spoke to Mark and we had a window of like week 42 or 44. I don't really remember what week it was. And we were on the phone and we were planning the next week. And then Mark just said like, oh, actually, like this Friday looks pretty insane. And this weekend, and we were planning to do the shoot the week after. So I just decided to, okay, let's go. So I just packed my things and went pretty much like the morning after. So it was a pretty hectic uh, uh, time there when you like wanted to do all the preparations and everything because I was really busy with other things so I didn't really have like a uh, hundred percent uh, knowledge about the forecast and the, that uh, low pressure was coming in so it was cool that Mark saw that and we actually just moved very quickly 
I took the boat, the ferry over from Gothenburg to Hansholm and drove over to Kittmuller where he stays. And I arrived late one night, the, the night before the, the big winds were gonna come and the next morning we just met up and it was so cool to meet him because we haven't met each other for a couple of years. Like I stopped competing on the world tour, he was uh, just traveling around the world. So our schedules and our you know, life, we haven't really seen each other. So it was really cool to see him again after so like a couple of years. And he just went out and just shredded the first morning and it was really intense. It was super cold. It was just so fucking windy. I mean, it was, I don't know for you who are, aren't windsurfers, when it's like, when Mark is on 3-4, then you know it's really windy. And also where we were shooting that day in Hanstholm is a very exposed beach and it was side on shore. So the wind kind of came from the ocean straight into the beach. So trying to get shelter, trying to frame him, capture the action, like with the morning light, it was a challenge and just like, you know, yeah, so that first action shoot was a bit <laughs> crazy and a bit hectic but in the end we got a couple of nice clips that we used in the end in the end edits so so i was stoked about that the same day we just kept going to different spots i think we had three sessions that day where mark was sailing uh, and then the next day we had two sessions with one with the water housing because the first day was really windy and then the day after we kind of the wind kind of were still around not too like not as much as the day before but still okay for sailing in some nice waves so it was perfect to go in the water and get like these additional water shots uh, and mark really did push these days uh, i do <laughs> like it's very cold and it's super cold in the water and outside as well and he had to like change and go from different spots uh you know jump in the wet wetsuits over and over again and still performing as he did so i'm very i was very impressed of he how professional he was in that he just kept pushing on the water and did some fucking amazing moves and really went at it so yeah was really stoked about that and the water shots we got a couple of nice water shots as well it was a lot of current um in Hanstol we were at a spot called fish factory and it was a struggle to swim and stay in, in the same spot and i tended to come very far inside where the waves weren't great but we got a couple of nice waves um when i was on the outside uh, as you can see in the in the final edit, uh, yeah. So 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 the, the, those first days were really, really, really cool and really demanding. Uh, and then we had like a couple of late days, and I was planning to maybe go back to Sweden because we had a lot of footage. But we kind of saw something was gonna happen like later on in that weekend. Uh, and also they were going to put on a, a competition, the Danish uh, Wave Open. Uh, so we, I kind of extended my trip <laughs> but day by day and we actually got to shoot a lot of lifestyle as well. And it was a very cool experience. We went um, out with two fishermen called Morten and Pierre um, on their boat uh, where Mark... Uh, <laughs> kind of uh, got incorporated in the in the fisher village of, of Klitmuller and went up on the boat with them uh, catching some fish, pulling some nets out of the water. So that was actually a really cool experience, early morning, beautiful light. And like myself, I am from fisher village in Sweden. So it was very cool to see how, how, how it reminded of, of that, like the, the same in Denmark and Sweden is very similar in that kind of sense. So that was actually a really cool experience to also, you know, be with the locals and, and showing him being with the locals because he has really been down with the locals. Uh, in Klitmuller, he his girlfriend, uh, he's working at the cafe, w which uh, her parents uh, is running. And um, Mark is working, <laughs> Mark is sometimes working in the restaurant, helping out and he's out. So, so he knows a lot of local people. So it's very cool to see him being integrated in, in the society of, of Klitmuller and he's super keen and he knows everybody and he thinks everybody's super friendly So and everybody's treating him well. So, so he's really stoked and it was really cool to see how he, 
you know, he he is a part of that community now, and and I kind of wanted to capture that on camera, so that was really dope. Then uh, we we got to shoot a lot of lifestyle, you know. I did some other stuff in between, and then the weekend came up with the Danish uh, championships and the Danish Wave Open. And man, that forecast was great. Again, it was going to be crazy windy, a little bit better angle of the wind. So we just like, fuck, I'm, I'm going to stay because I want to capture this moment. And it was good because uh, Mark have, hadn't been competing for a couple of years. Yeah, because the world tour hasn't been on since the pandemic hit. So so he was really keen to, to, to practice some heats. And uh, yeah, so I just extended my trip and stayed over the weekend. And bro, he was sailing so good in that competition and the competition in general, I have to give it to, to the Danish Wave Open crew. Such a great event, such a nice vibe. Uh, everybody were just happy to, to bring the windsurfing community of Denmark and a lot of uh, German guys and girls came over as well. A lot of young people came out. Uh, so it was really cool to see like how like the more national level events is still buzzing and, and still very 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 much alive and the level was so high you know like Mass Bjorno, Kenneth Danielsen, uh, Henry, uh, Mass Bjorno's son uh, and, and a bunch of other guys were ripping so hard uh, so it was very cool to see how how the level is standing with with the guys and Mark yeah I, I don't want to say too much but he absolutely killed it in in the in the in the competition man he was trading so good and it was really fun to see and it was a pleasure to just capture it on camera because like he's push he do like push loop forwards doubles very very nice wave riding in fucking stacked three four so it was very impressive and i'm really happy that we got it on camera uh, and he was happy he that he won it and he was really you know in tune with this gear and he was sailing so great so it was a lot of fun to capture that and and on top of that you know he was injured as well he had like a, a ligament that was um, detached in his big toe so later on this winter he had to get surgery to stitch it together so he's been out he's back on the water now he's in maui training so it's good to see him back and you know but in general that week when we were shooting he was performing so well with a pretty nasty injury in his toe and like the big toe you know when you're riding and everything you, you put a lot of pressure on it so it, it was very painful for him but he was just such a pro and just fucking went at it so yeah big big thumbs up to him and a big uh, well done to mark for delivering uh, on the water and yeah man other than that um the cameras that we used with the GH5s, uh, I used a GH5S and a GH5. Uh, in the water housing, I used the GH5 because it has a little bit better uh, stabilization than the GH5S. And all the lifestyle I shot with the GH5S, the interview we did, the talking head, we shot uh, with the Mark was with the GH5S. The second angle was with the GH5. I think there's like one cut in the final edit with the with the GH5. The water housing that we use is a salty surf housings. Water housing works great. I'm really happy with it. For the GH5 is perfect. Uh, and I also really do like to be with the GH5 in the water because it's a small camera, it's light. I can swim around it, like when I dive under waves, you know, it's not in the way. I can just focus on being in the right spot and put it up and shoot. And it's good, it's uh, stabilized. And I think the aperture I put is like, 5.6 something like that and i put it so i had a pretty broad spectra of, of focus so he can come pretty close pretty far away like i i have a range so i need to position myself but i know if i'm in that range the the athlete or the rider will always be in focus so that's kind of what i how i like to shoot it when i'm shooting in the water and yeah after the amazing week of, of uh, shooting uh, we got we scored some really good conditions we got some really good lifestyle shots um, and we were following the plan very very good uh, and then i came back to sweden and i and i did the post um, production process and man it was a lot of footage to go through a lot of footage to to um, 
you know, do select, especially in the windsurfing, because there were so many moves, man. He, he was just like landing everything, so so it was pretty hard to to choose uh, that. Uh, the lifestyle stuff was pretty clear. I had a shot list that I went through, so so I kind of knew already what kind of shots I I had. But you know, there's always a few extra. And also like on the boat trip with the fishermen you had to go through because that was just i was just rolling all the time pretty much getting different angles to to enhance the story a little bit uh, i edited the project in final cut pro 10. i kind of mixed it up so i did mm, the different segments you know in different uh, events so i did one piece in the beginning you know the intro and then the first action segment and then the lifestyle documentary segment the second action segment and the third lifestyle seg segment and then the third um action segments i did them separately so it was really easy like i didn't have this massive timeline and also for my mind it was easier to go in and focus like okay i'm, I'm gonna do this the part which is a couple of minutes and then some of the day i did the other part which was a couple of minutes and then i could dig deep into like getting the groove of just that part and that segment and then after uh, i've done all the segments i kind of stitched them together in a timeline and kind of did the transitions between them and kind of uh, you know uh, Edited so, so it kind of let the story went well together uh, through the whole thing, um, and then I did the color grade, and then I did like some effect stuff, and then I did the final sound and the sound design. Yeah, so all in all, I'm really happy with how it came out. It was definitely a challenging project, uh, but I'm really happy that we actually made it happen. That's what I'm pretty much most stoked about that we actually got it to happen and we have a final piece to show uh, thank you to mark for for really pushing the limits on the water and always being on it and really believing in this project as well um, thank you to fanatic and Tune, matt and the other guys uh, for sponsoring it and for pushing us and, and believing in us so i really appreciate that and was, without you it wouldn't be possible to do it and thanks to tilde Mark's girlfriend and her family for, for letting us use their home to shoot the interview, for being so helpful, letting us eat uh, in the in the cafe pretty much every day and all the all the people at the cafe was so nice. I can really recommend the that cafe if you're in Klitmuller. Uh, I don't really know how to pronounce the name. It's like Haugus or something like that. I, I, I will have a link in the description to the website. Very good food, very cozy place, very like it was such a nice vibe in that cafe and the food was great so yeah i can really recommend if you're going to clip Miller, definitely you should go and eat there uh, thank you to lars for the good times uh, for letting us stay at his place and helping us find spots some secret spots and you know just, and just being very helpful with the project and uh, such a po positive spirit so so thank you lars for the good times and uh, thank you to the Danish Open crew for putting the event together and all the competitors and the people that were surrounding and all the volunteers helping out during the event. It was very cool to see, as I said before, to see that the national event uh, community is alive and kicking. So yeah, I'm stoked for those guys and thank you so much. I can't wait. Hopefully I can make it to next, uh, the next one as well. And yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen the film yet, check it out. It's uh, live on our YouTube channel. Uh, hope you enjoy it. And thank you for watching this episode of the podcast. Uh, and until next time, take care.